Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Hyman Delapari here with Wingman 115, enjoying some time out in the uh, SoCal woods. And I wanted to kind of talk about something uh, that I've I've been approached on, asked about, and I figured I'd just share it. And that's about the U.S. military sun hat, boonie hat. It's something that I really like to wear and that uh, uh, oftentimes I, I ask pe uh, people come to me just tips on you know why do you wear it the way you do and how do I modify it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about and uh, stick around maybe you'll pick up some tips. So ever since I was a kid I've always been drawn to the Vietnam War and that Vietnam experience especially with the small unconventional units whether it was the military advisors or those SOG units that stands for uh, Special Operations Groups, later changed the name to Special Observations Groups, trying to camouflage it, or the Force Recon guys, the SEALs. Anyways, all those guys that were doing the cross-border type operations, they adopted the piece of headgear of the boonie hat, what we call the boonie hat. Now that actually was influenced by the Viet Cong, from what I've read, from what I've looked into. So the VC, obviously they had already been engaged in a long war with in, in the French colonial wars and whatnot. So the, the Viet Cong had almost like a witch hat, a black hat that got pulled down tight and they had a very large brim. And as the small, the U.S. small unconventional units were doing their campaigns and whatnot, they noticed the effectiveness of that hat, not just for the sun, but for rain, and more importantly, for the concealment of breaking up that human outline of the head and the neck and the torso. So it was quickly adopted, and then they started to issue that to those units. And one of the things that was noticed about those hats at that time is that the brims kind of like what i'm wearing right now is a, a large brim obviously how the vc were wearing for again the protection of sun and rain one of the problems that arose with that is that those large brims especially if they were very droopy is that it would impede your vision your peripheral so after a while a couple of things were happening either, either the troops are rolling up their hats kind of like it looks back here uh to either like on mine if i got a big rucksack that was back from my military days you know that kind of hit so they would roll that up even the brands up on the front just so that they could see so inevitably some of your sf units started actually trimming the brim shorten them shorting them up and i think that's kind of where we started getting some of the bucket hats that that's another term not to be confused with a boonie hat two different hat designs and i'll, I'll bring that up a little bit more but uh so there's there's a little bit of a rich history at least for me that i'm passionate about because it it, it is tied in with those small unconventional units and a lot of that what they did, what was happening, wasn't able to be talked about up until, you know, in the 80s and 90s when books were coming out and things were being declassified of what we were doing and what that involved. So that's another topic for another conversation. I get very passionate. But back to the boonie hat. I've been wearing it all my life uh, as a kid, going into the military, and now that I'm out, every time I'm outdoors, hiking, fishing, whatever, it's on my melon. But there are certain uh, differences between like let's say a civilian version and the military version and that's something i want to touch upon so one of the first things in regard to the the mil spec military specification type of boonie hat is that and and it well let me just show you on mine in the way that it is cut it's very reminiscent to what is known as the patrol cap uh, and i'm talking army air force in the in the marine corps they're they're soft caps covers uh, they're shaped a little bit different, eight point, same thing uh, for me in the Navy, we wore the eight point hat, we just didn't have the anchor globe and eagle. But in regard to this uh, boonie, the, just the top, never mind the brim, if you look at an army patrol cap, they have the same style design where it's a, a tall back, and there is a front and back obviously, the taller back, you see the stitching, and then the shorter front. If we remove this brim and just have a small bill, it's like a patrol cap. Now, per military standards of wearing in uniformity, the hat is to be uh, horizontal to the deck. Same thing with the head from the front and going to the crown. So very much like to the way I'm wearing it. So that's uh, it, it's a it's a it's a military thing. It's a uniform thing. In other words, they're not they're not you know dropping it down. You know, like you would a ball cap. Most of our ball caps, baseball caps, we wear them and we and we bring them way down. So from a military looking sharp perspective, it's, it's supposed to be worn that way. Now, 
it's still a hat as a civilian wear it however you want but that's one of the concepts that i just kind of wanted to point out because people do see me wearing it still kind of from a military perspective and they don't understand why personal choice on my end but then there's also a, a second reason i don't like having that dropping all the way down because I, I i tend to have a lot of heat back here a lot of sweat so having that hat riding up high kind of lets that breathe a little bit that's just me you know but that that also explains the look and the style and why some military forces you notice a distinctive look on that so one of the things that um speaking of military standards depending on the unit it, uh, they it how lax they are or how rigid they are in their uniform code will determine what you can do as far as modifications with the brim. One of the things that uh, I do see is like what I've got here is that back roll up. And that's for a lot of the, the infantry units and grunts when we got a lot of equipment, it helps so that it's not like bopping or getting pushed up. So that's some, a, a common thing that you will see. Some people like to pop up the brim so that they got a clearer vision, especially when you're crawling through the brush and you got a lot of thick vegetation. You just don't want to have that. And it's easy to just drop that all down. That way, if, if that back flap is further back, obviously more protection to the sun and whatnot. Now, one of the biggest modifications that I do see, both civilian and military, is the cowboy roll, where they roll up the hat and they use the chin strap to do that. Now I'm gonna get into the whole chin strap here in just a bit. But in doing that, yeah, it may look a little cooler and whatnot, but you're now defeating the purpose of that hat, which is, I mean, on this tag, it says hat, sun, hot weather. So by doing that, now your ears are gonna be getting burnt and uh, your, uh, parts of your neck. So also, remember when we talked about that camouflage effectiveness of breaking out the human outline in Vietnam? If you do that, now we're repeating that human shape and we're we're taking away of that advantage of that camouflage factor of breaking up that shape if y'all know what i mean especially if you see me ducking down here yeah you see that neck inside but if i'm ducked down now you you can see how that profile gets broken up so yeah go ahead roll it up cowboy style looks cool but you, you know just know that you're kind of getting away from that effectiveness so that's uh some of the modifications on the brim i'll get into some more but you know what i'm going to touch upon the chin strap real quick now I don't use it as a chin strap. That's pretty short. There's no way that's getting up on my face. Uh, like uh, my buddy John told me, the way I wear it, it's kind of like the campaign hats of old. The same way that a drill sergeant will wear his smoky bear hat, it goes to the back of my head. So that way, that chin strap isn't flopping around my neck. Yeah, you could throw it into your hat. Maybe you could even cut it off. But this way, let me tell you, my hat is locked on. I cannot pull it off this way. I have to pull it off this way. So that's something that I, I think it's misunderstood. Yes, you can cinch it up underneath your chin, but a lot of people don't like having that, especially if you got like neck knives or other things around your neck. So that's one thing to consider. I just threw a simple knot. I got this little leather uh, trap there and it works excellent and for me and, and what I'm doing. So a little food for thought that that chin strap can be kind of a behind the head strap. And that's something that you see a lot in the military and it kind of doesn't get trickled down into the civilian sector, but it's a very effective way to use it. Otherwise, if you don't like it, just tuck it in your hat. It's there in case you need it, but it's also out of the way. So those are uh, just a couple things surrounding the, 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 the basic structure of the hat understanding the way that it's cut it's you know for that military type look and the way it's worn obviously wear it however you want same thing with that chin strap uh you can use it behind the head it helps keep it trapped or now i'm going to get into uh some of the modifications and again uh learning from our our brothers back of the vietnam era the special operations unit i mentioned that some of those guys they were cutting the brims shortening those brims some of them were cutting those chin straps if they just didn't need them so uh, I ended up purchasing a, uh, an, another boonie just because I wanted more mil spec. I was uh, at Lachlan Air Force Base and I got a peanut head, I got a small head. So finding a hat that fits me well to how I want, it's tough. It's like I gotta go to a kid's store, right? So I found this at the base and it fit perfect on my little peanut head. And I wanted a, a boonie hat. This one, I really can't do archery too well because of the larger brim. My bowstring tends to, uh, to make contact with that and it will affect the flight of my arrow and that's probably a good topic for another conversation of properly picking a hat when you're uh, 
shooting outdoors. So back to this one, I wanted to give it a shorter brim. So I went to my local tailor. I had already marked off about half an inch from where it was. And uh, they took the seam and cut it, reattached the seam. So it looks like it came right out of the box that way. It looks great. So that's something you can do. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can just take scissors and cut it out. If you want to be high speed, trim that, that the, the, the trimming off, just gently cut it out. And then if you got your hands on a sewing machine or you're an expert sewer, seamstress, just reattach it and it'll give it that fresh out of the box looks. And, and it does keep that, uh, that brim shorter. So for me, wearing it and I'm pulling my bowstring, I can bring my bowstring back to my face. Also, if you notice, there is no chin strap. I just cut it off because I, in reference to the way in the back of the head, I just wanted something that's going to sit up. And again, I talked about how I like it high up behind my melon. And, and that's what I want. Again, we see that same type of cut like the patrol cap. And uh, that's how I wear it. Now I did also three things I modified, cut off the chin strap, shorten the brim. And then I attached my little uh, morale patch blood type. Because if I'm out in the woods and I go down hard, hey, it's great to know that you know what your blood type is if you need assistance in that realm but um uh one of the things also i want to get into in regard to wearing it i do now this is going to be more on the military culture of things some of you may have heard of what we refer to as the ranger role so when it comes to the patrol caps there's a way that uh certain elite units basically rangers maybe airborne and sf guys they tend to do a, a, a stylizing to the top of the hat and it's kind of a cultural thing it, it, it makes you it, it stands out knowing that you've gone through some different training, so outside of the conventional units. So that's, the Ranger role is a style of doing it. Another way that, I've know, that I saw when I was in the Army and I kind of adopted is just simply crushing, crushing the front of your hat. So kind of like the old school paper boy hats. Uh, a good example, if y'all ever saw the movie Predator, the first one, the original one, the character Poncho, he wore his, his patrol cap the same way. And I don't know what I'm about to tell you is true or not, but in me doing research, you know, I, I like looking at uh, the history of military uniforms. If you look at some of the old Civil War hats, ball caps, they had that tall cloth with a round cap, and a lot of those guys, they would smush them down and bring them forward. So I don't know from a military cultural perspective from the Army, if that trickled down from there or not, or it was just a way to kind of look different. We all look the same in uniform, all crisp and everything. So sometimes some guys just want to look different. I kind of just like it smashing it down. I still have the air vents in there and that's something actually important of when it rides up tall. This, whether it's this or crushing it down versus, this is just an example, versus doing this and you got it all like that. Now, part of the problem that I have with that is that the air circulation, I'm really trapping down on my, on my head and I kind of feel a little goofy as well. So the difference between circulating the air through the hat and then having a little bit of a air space for me, it's a huge deal, it's a huge deal. So I am by no means an officer of the Fashion Police Academy, but I just know what I like to wear and what works for me. So that's kind of about it. That's, that's just my personal take. Uh, in regards to, you know, wearing it high up on top, that's more of a military standard kind of thing. And, and you can't see that uh, within our modern day troops. Uh, but, you know, it's a hat. It's just a hat. And, you know, for those, you know, that are civilian, wear it how you want. You know? But uh, maybe this will help uh, understand why you see it worn differently or may look differently on other people and as to its effect. So um, for, uh, I know there's uh, one of my cousins, he really likes to, shape the brim on his hat and it looks really cool and it works for him but uh, don't forget that you're kind of sacrificing the effectiveness of that brim even though i modified this one shorter if you notice i don't have it rolled up like uh like my other boonie because i really don't need that because it's a shorter brim so find find what works for you you know keep the strap if you want this is actually the strap that i cut from this hat i want to leave it for a demo and this one's as easy easy to move up and down when when it was there otherwise I did tie a little knot on there, but point is find out what works best for you. So I hope this gave you a little bit of information, you know, historical information that you can appreciate and maybe give you some tips on how to wear your boonie out in the outdoors. Cause I think it's one of the best pieces of headgear that can be used when you're out in the sun or in the rain or out on the hunt. So thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.